Coming up on today's episode of Dallas Mavericks Today, can Omax Prosper become a reliable piece for the Mavericks at some point? We're going to talk about that here on the show. Jeffrey Cooperstein and Harrison Graham with you. Coop, before we got, dive into some of our analysis and thoughts, I want to hear from the people. Do you guys have faith in Omax? If so, like the video. If not, comment why down below. All right, Coop, obviously not much to really react to from nope. his rookie season, was never really in the rotation, and it's just kind of funny how things play out sometimes in sports, and I think especially in the NBA and with these drafts, it's such a crapshoot a lot of the time after Absolutely. the first few picks. I mean, you and I both kind of sat there on draft night. We're like, okay, uh, Luke-ish warm on the lively pick because I don't think he can help you right away. Well, that was obviously – Incorrect. He was way better than expected right away. And then Omax Prosper, we kind of thought the opposite. Like, okay, he might actually be able to help you right away, but maybe he doesn't have the ceiling of a Derek Lively. And kind of the opposite played out. And so now when you couple that with not a super inspiring summer league, it's not really – easy to determine where this goes from here. Absolutely. Yeah. It, I, I don't know if disappointing is the right word for Omax's rookie year, but I wouldn't say that he impressed by any means. Uh, didn't expect a whole lot from him. I did think he would be ready to help the Mavs more than Lively, and like you said, we were clearly wrong on that. Uh, but going into year two, I don't think, and obviously you and I haven't really, you know, been there, and we're not inside the organization and whatnot, but it doesn't seem like Omax has made a big enough impression to where he is now a solidified part of this rotation. I still think there's work to be done, and I still think there's a lot of questions uh, that he that need to be asked of him to see if he's ready to be able to do this thing. Yeah, I mean, it was clear in the summer league they wanted to kind of like let him kind of run the show offensively, play through him quite a bit, which is smart. Like, get him some shots, let him try to generate some offense, and – you know, he, he scored with some volume, but the efficiency clearly not there. Well, now, I, I think – I don't want to overreact to this too much, Coop, because if you watch a lot of the shots he's taking in Summer League, those just aren't shots he's going to take in an NBA sure. game right now. So, like, I think for him, the focus really needs to be on working on catch-and-shoot three-point shots. Absolutely. Like, can you become a – at least – decent three-point shooter in this league because if you're playing for the Mavericks, you're going to get good looks when your minutes overlap with Luka especially. So that's really what the focus should be on for him the rest of the summer and on into training camp and in the preseason. If if he wants to crack, not even the rotation, but just even like, hey, kid's going to give you some minutes here and there, give you yep. a chance to do something – that's got to be at least somewhat of a threat because if he can't knock down threes, I mean, he's just not going to get minutes here right now. Uh, I compare his development path a lot to Dorian Finney-Smith's where at first he was a really bad shooter, uh, frankly, coming out of Florida. The Mavs completely revamped his shot and turned him into one of the better 3 and D guys in the league. I kind of think that's what they're hoping to do with Omax to where they're going to try to revamp his shot pretty much completely from scratch and see if they can't find a shooter in there. I think there is one in there. I think he's willing to put in the work. It's just a matter of his development path and how fast it comes. The problem is, is right now, the Mavs have an abundance of wings on roster who are able to shoot at a pretty high level and who are frankly just above Omax. Now, I know Klay Thompson's more of a two, but he is going to be the starting three for this team. So he, he kind of has a hill to climb here. Yeah, I mean, and, and that could be good or bad. I mean, the good news is, from the Mavericks standpoint, is they don't really need him this year. Uh, that's pretty clear. Um, you know, the downside is you spent a first-round pick on him. He didn't do much as a rookie. Um, you know, you don't really have plans for him to crack your rotation in year two. So it's kind of like, okay, where does this go long term? But um, the, the positive side of it is, like, the pressure should be off. Like, if you're Omax – like, really just work on your game. Like, like that's what he needs to be doing and uh, trying to improve. And one thing we know for sure is he's got an NBA body. He's got upside to be at least a plus defender, if not a very good one. Now, I think when he did play last year, like, you saw signs of him being a good defender. You also saw signs of, like, he doesn't really know where to go. Yeah. <laughs> like, especially in, like, you know, those team type of, uh, defensive sets where it's not just like defend your guy one on one, uh, but yeah, I mean, I, I I think we're on the same page right now. Where like 
do I expect him to play even a minor role on this team this year? I, I would say no. Uh, in just a couple minutes, we will get into how he can play a role on this team. But first, we have to talk about our sponsor, which, of course, is Game Time. Shout out to Game Time for sponsoring today's show. We're starting to exit the dead period. NFL preseason action getting this going week. here. This week, yeah. Hall of Fame game was last week. Cowboys get underway uh, here this week as well. If you want to go check out a Cowboys preseason game or uh, got Rangers-Astros this week as well. Big series out at Globe Life Field. Get your tickets with game time. They're going to get you the best deal possible. Last-minute tickets for the lowest price guaranteed. And when you download the app and create an account, use code CHATSPORTS. You get $20 off your first Purchase only at terms apply there, but game time is awesome. Uh, I've used them for uh, a couple of recent trips uh, out to the ballpark, and uh, you can see your exact vantage points on buying tickets. You uh, get your tickets digitally sent to you in a timely manner, uh, like their motto is, last-minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed, no stress. A lot of these ticketing apps, ah, you don't really know where the tickets are. They're in limbo. You're having to, like, check emails and then did it morph into an app that you have to download. Game time keeps it very simple. So go check it out today. Use code chat sports for $20 off your first purchase and uh, go attend some sporting events, concerts, etc. It's all out there for you. Okay. Uh, how Omax can play again. I, I don't think we have high hopes. He's going to play a big role, but um, if he does, these things probably need to happen. And I back to the defense coop. Like, can he give you, some plus defense at the three and the four. I think that is the one like minor opening coup with Maxi Kleba, who's going to miss time at some point. He we will. It's a matter of when, not a matter of that if. could open up some minutes. And, you know, I think Najee Marshall could play some four. Obviously, PJ Washington's going to play some four for this team, but uh, that could be an opportunity where Omax gets a look. And uh, when that door cracks open, he's going to have to at least be a high-level defender if he wants to have a chance to stay in the rotation. Uh, one, one thing we know about Jason Kidd is that if you can show that you can defend in an NBA game, he will, a chance. he'll find a way to put you on the court, absolutely. So I think if he's able to show that plus defense uh, at the three and the four when they need it, that, that'll be the quickest way for him to get on the court uh, and contribute positively to this team. And then number two, I think he has to shoot 35-plus percent from three. Like, he has to be an above-average three-point shooter. That's just how you're going to establish yourself in the NBA nowadays. If you're anything below than that, you better have an elite skill, whether it be shot blocking or on the defensive end, uh, being a great distributor, etc. You better have a skill that is going to translate into this league. And I think Omax is, is going to be shooting at some point. It's going to have to be. Yeah, he's going to have to shoot the ball better uh, than we've seen in a, in a small sample size, granted. But again, I mean... it. This is a place to become a good shooter with the with the looks you're going to get playing with Luca and Kyrie and no question. some of these other guys. So, you know, if he does get in there early in the season and show he can knock down some shots and defend at a good clip, then that's certainly going to help his cause. Uh, rebounding, and, you know, that is something he could show too. Like, say if Kleba misses, you know, two, three weeks and – he shows he's a much better rebounder than Kleba because Kleba's not a very good rebounder. He's 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 the tallest. Him and Dwight Powell are the only guys who are 6'10 and above who can't rebound the ball. It's kind of unbelievable. If Omax, who's 6'9", 6'10", uh, can rebound at a better clip and do some of the other things we're talking about, then eh, maybe just maybe uh, that does give him an opportunity. And then lastly, and I think the way you earn Jason Kidd's trust in general is do some of these other things. Sure. But kid, kid is clearly like – you know, I think all coaches do this, but like he, he kind of has his favorites, right? He does. He's a Kleba guy. Like yep. he trusts him clearly to do what is asked. And uh, as a young player, it, it's going to be hard to get there, but it happened with Derek Lively, so it's certainly not impossible. The, the way you do that is when, when you do get an opportunity, you just have to make the most of it, and you got to play at a high level. I think Omax is going to be able to do that. Uh, it, it's just a matter of his development path, man, and hopefully he takes advantage of the opportunities that are given to him, and those are probably going to be limited to start the season. So when he does get an opportunity, he's just got to take it and run with it and make make sure that Jason Kidd has to play him. And the best way to earn his trust is, number one, is defending at a high level. 100%. Like, it, it's a reason Jaden Hardy didn't take the next step in terms of getting consistent minutes last year is because he doesn't play much defense. Nope. Like, it, you know – he, he played a decent role in the playoffs with his scoring, but it had to be limited minutes because he's not going to defend at a high clip, at least not at this point. Omax has the upside and the body type to be a good defender in this league. So, again, you know, while he's in the lab this summer and 
early on in training camp, like that's got to be his calling card is A, defend at a high level, and B, show that you can start to knock down threes at a somewhat efficient clip. So predict it for us. Will Omax be in the rotation at some point this year? Type Y for yes, type in for no. I think Coop for me, as we kind of put a wrap on this, unless there's an injury and he just really takes care of or takes advantage of an opportunity, I don't see him being a consistent rotation piece, at least this year. I agree. Yeah, I don't I don't think it happens this year. And th- I think that's kind of disappointing because I was thinking at the end of last year that, yeah, he would be a part of this rotation on a very good team. But at this point in time, the Mavs just simply don't have time for him to develop on the court. Now, they can work with him as much as they want on the side, in practice, uh, pregame and whatnot. But right now, this team is in the business of winning ball games. And they got to play the guys who are going to help them win. I'm not sure Omax is one of the 10, even 11 guys that helps them win at the moment. So as of right now, I don't see him being a part of this rotation. Do you think he's down in Frisco at all this year? Uh, maybe a little less than last year. But, yeah, I think he he'll get some run be. down there as well. Yeah, it's it, that's entirely possible. The thing, if he goes down to Frisco, he better dominate, though. Like, yeah. I, he played well there last year. He better be by far the best player on the court when he goes down there. Yeah, he definitely needs to show that he can be one of the better players at that level. All right, Coop, uh, good stuff. Uh, Guys, uh, we'll continue to crank out content for you guys. If you have any, by the way, let's just throw this out there. Any segment ideas that you want us to talk about? We're an open book this time of year. This was from the comment section, so that's how we got this content idea. Yeah, if you guys have anything, please put it down in the comments. Things are slow right now, so we're always down to try new things. So About two months away from uh, opening night. I, it, listen, it'll be Let's here go, before baby. we know it. So uh, uh, appreciate you guys for tuning in, and uh, we'll see you guys soon. See ya.